Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and this is another video in our exploration of Python using the PyCharm IDE. And in this one we're going to be using uh, talking about classes. So I'm going to create a new module. So I'm going to create a new file, new py file. So a new Python file, we'll call this one classes.py and here we'll create classes. Now what a class is, is you want to create sort of like a a sort of data set that represents something in your program and you want to make sure that sort of follows a template so in the sense think of it like we're going to create a class called dogs that represents what a dog is like so the way this would work is we would say class dog and usually you do this uppercase so class dog okay and then here we'll just start defining the things about a dog okay we'll say name equals sparky and legs we'll assume that dogs have four legs okay and uh, we'll have a function so we'll define a function in the dog called bark okay and I will not pass so, okay, in Python, the every, everything in the class always passes itself in first. So we're passing the instance of the dog into the function every single time. Okay, so that kind of takes the place of sort of the this keyword you might know from other programming languages. So in this case, basically what I want is I just want to print woof. Okay, and there we go. We got a dog, and we create a dog. The problem, oh, first let's create a dog. So let's see here. So now that we have this, we're gonna import. So from classes, import dog. And now I'm gonna say, create a variable called Sparky, and it's gonna equal a dog. Because at the end of the day, um, you basically create a class as if it were a function. So what this does is that when I run the dog function, it creates a new instance of dog and stores it in the variable. Okay, so now I have a dog and we can see that if we were to print each of the properties, so we could sit there and say print sparky dot name print sparky dot legs and then we can actually run sparky dot bark we can see that we have this object save okay see sparky has four legs and he woofs now the problem with this is that not all dogs are named sparky so if i keep using that dog function it's always going to make a dog named sparky because that's I kind of hard-coded the name Sparky into this class. So this is why classes have constructors. Now usually, like if you've done JavaScript, it's just constructor is what's the constructor function. Here, it's a function called init, because you'll notice like a lot of these sort of private hidden variables are always surrounded by sort of double uh, underscores. So it's a function called init, which we need to override, and we always have to pass in self first. Again, every method gets passed in self first, and then we can pass in what anything else that we want passed in when we use the dog function. So I want, we're going to let you specify a name and we're going to let you specify a sound. Okay. And what we're going to do is say when this happens, self.name equals the name that we pass in. Okay. It doesn't like the way I formed that constructor. Oh, because we have to use def. There we go. Okay. Self.name equals name and self dot sound will equal sound okay cool and from going forward instead of saying woof we are just going to take whatever the sound property is and then that's what the sound the, the sound the dog will make so this way you have more flexibility in the kind of dogs you're making Okay. Cool. And 
so that's saved. So now if I go back to testing.py, I can do this instead. So now I can actually specify, let me just remember what order I put that in, so it's name then sound. So I can specify that this name, dog's name is Sparky. Okay, and it goes bow wow. Okay. So now if I do this, it's still gonna be the same Sparky, except now he says bow wow, because my constructor, this these arguments get passed into my constructor and uh, do what I wanted it to do. Because see, this, this gets passed in here for name, because itself it always passes itself first. So all these properties I defined here become part of itself, and it gets passed in as an argument in its creation, which is kind of a weird thing to think about, but that's what's happening. Okay, so now I'm creating something that behaves like a dog. Okay, now I can create another dog. Go back to testing. So here we'll call, give another dog named Spot. And Spot's also a dog named Spot, who goes woof. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print Spot dot bark. So we'll have Spot bark. So a function that's on an object. So again, spot is an spot is just one dog. It's what's referred to as an instance of dog. Okay, we can create as many instances of dog, and each instance is unique, and each instance can bark. These functions that an instance of the class has are referred to as methods. So I'm using the bark method on the dog class from spot, and then we'll say Sparky does the same thing. Sparky barks. Sparky dot bark. Okay, and we'll create another dog. Mittens, okay, which also equals a dog with the name Mittens, and who goes? Yip yip, small little dog. Okay, and now I can be like print Mittens will now bark. Okay, and we'll see that each of them barks differently. See, uh, boop, 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 wait, something went, oh, I see, wait one second, whoa, oh, I see, because I have, it already prints inside, I don't need to actually wrap these in a print, so it's, it's the, the bark function doesn't return anything, so there's nothing for the print function to print, so if I do that, then we should be good, there we go, woof, bow wow, yip, yip. Okay, and that's cool. So we can create the uh, um, lots of instances of dog and have them interact with each other. N and uh, that's very neat. Now let's go back here and let's create a, a small dog class. Okay, and the way that would work, so you want to inherit. So that means you're creating a class based on another class. You would say small dog. And then as a kind of as a function, you pass in the class that it inherits from. Okie dokie. Okay, and basically we can go in here and add new properties. So we can be like fold in purse. So def fold in purse, because we're saying it's a very small dog. Okay, and again, it has to be passed in self because it's just how methods work in Python. And we'll just say it prints. Okay, uh, self dot name. So we're going to interpolate the name of the dog. Hops into your purse. Okay. Save. So now if I go to the testing, I can change mittens from a dog to a small dog. Still has the ability to bark, but now I can also take mittens into a purse. Mittens. Up. Well, let's see here. What was the fold in purse? Fold in purse. Okay. Oh, I need to actually import small dog. So dog, small dog. Actually, was that camel case? Yes. Small dog. There we go. 
Okay, and see mittens, I misspelled mittens, hops into the purse. Okay, so you can do that. You can, you can, you can create classes based on classes that already exist. I didn't have to redefine things like bark and legs. All that was already done in dog. But I wanted to do things that were only specific to small dogs because it's just more organized that way. Because why would you want to have every dog have the ability to do all big, small, and medium dog things? So anything, so basically anything that's like all dogs, I put in dog. And then if there's things that specific are specific to a small dog, I'll put them in the small dog class. And same thing with like a large or a medium dog. And then this is what you call object-oriented programming, where you're taking the things that are in your code and thinking of them as objects that you can then uh, play with and manipulate. So this is a decent introduction to how classes work. Um, and this has been a pretty good coverage of just sort of um, the basic syntax of Python. There's a lot more. I highly recommend going back and uh, reading the Python documentation. Um, but this gives you a nice primer on how uh, Python works. And then the next step would be to start playing with like some external libraries and having some uh, real fun with it. So my name is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com. Have a great day and enjoy.